you have to learn to put past failures behind you everybody who wants to move forward has a past the reason why the past sometimes have more power over us than the future is because the future has not happened the past has already happened the past is a memory the future is a declaration there are some places you sit you must stop sitting there is some conversation you listen to you must stop listening to it and sometimes the people who do you the most harm are people who like you but people who like you can do you the most harm this is rich nation wbpt podcast we introduce you to the people and ideas and we bring people together how do we press into our blessing how do we enter into such opportunity and take hold of them i'm going to just share four thoughts with you and we will be done the first one is that you have to learn to put past failures behind you everybody who wants to move forward has a past each one of us have a past a past that always wants to draw you back a past that always makes demands on you to take you to a place in your life that you don't want to be but your past is always going to draw on you the past works on us through our memory through our memory things we remember if it didn't work last year you will remember it if something went wrong in your life you will remember it if you have suffered a lot of disappointment you will remember even after god has delivered you from the disappointment you still remember it because your memory will not be obliterated your memories will be there so the challenge is how to deal with your memory Isaiah chapter 42 verses 8 to 10 God speaks to the children of Israel who were confronted with a bright future as well as a very dim past the future looked good but the past was present the reason why the past sometimes have more power over us than the future is because the future has not happened the past has already happened so the memory your brain has already captured what has happened it is real in your mind you can file it you can lay hold on it the future is an imagination it's faith and you cannot really hold on to it because there's no memory of the future it's an anticipation but the past is a memory and so it's very easy for you in the midst of a revival to go back to your past because your memory is still intact and Israel was struggling with a situation like that and God spoke to them in Isaiah chapter 42 verses 10 8 to 10 he says I am the Lord that is my name and my glory I will not give to another nor my praise to carved images behold the former things have come to pass and new things I declare before they spring forth I tell you of them sing to the Lord a new song and his praise to the ends of the earth you who go down to the sea and all that is in it you coastlands and you inhabitants of them God speaks to them by first introducing himself who he is and then he says the former things the past things are gone they've come to pass new things I declare and so God is speaking about something new but he also takes cognizance of the fact that the people still have memories of past failure and they have to learn to put past failures behind the picture of your past failure the image of the past failure you have to get beyond it and god says before the future comes he tells you of it that is the thing the past is a memory the future it's a declaration God declares the future this is what I'm going to do but there is no tangibility with it because it's just a word but the past you can remember you can see it in the chair you can see it in a letter you can see it in something around you it's your past and you remember it but God is taking you into a better future and you have to learn to put past behind you how do you do it he tells us in verse 10 sing to the Lord a new song if God is doing a new thing in your life your song must change you must sing a new song your words must change 
your phrases must change your declarations must change they must move from defeat to victory they must move from fear to faith you must start saying new things you must start declaring new things you must start singing when god starts a new thing in your life your vocabulary must be affected a song has two parts the part that you emotionally respond to and the part that you intellectually respond to the words of a song you listen with your mind intellectually but the rhythm what we call the beat the melody you move to emotionally so one moves your brain the other moves your body and God says sing a new song that means your brain must think differently and your body must move differently you're going to think afresh and you're going to start dancing in a new way you're going to start moving in a new way you're going to move in a new direction sing to the Lord a new song sometimes the new song may be that you start changing your vocabulary and you start declaring for yourself what God says you are prophesying to yourself but it also means that sometimes there are some places you go to you must stop going because the song has changed the movement must also change there are some places you sit you must stop sitting there is some conversation you listen to you must stop listening to it because that conversation is all old song and sometimes the people who do you the most harm are people who like you it's paradoxical but people who like you can do you the most harm why because they sympathize with you and because they sympathize with you anytime they meet you they say things that they have said in the past which you used to take comfort from for example if you are poor and you're having serious financial crisis there are people who sympathize with you your friends their words their comfort their consolation trying to help you they imprison you with words of defeat words of failure you have to sing a new song and you have to make sure that the places you used to go that will imprison you in unbelief you move away from those places some of you will go to the office and you hear the same old conversation oh it's hard and this and that and all that and, and you hear all kinds of self-defeated things believe you me if you don't put a stop to it by the time you move from the office tomorrow all your faith is drained out now you have forgotten every declaration you made you've even forgotten you are in a hundred day open window you may think you are in a hundred day fuel crisis but it's a hundred day open window you have to sing a new song you have to change your words you have to change your language you have to change your conversation you have to change your movement you have to stop going to some places if those places are not going to encourage you don't go there keep your feet in the house of god keep your feet around centers of faith where your faith will be inspired and challenged put past failures behind you second thing to do protect your prophetic destiny if you cannot protect what god says you are nobody will protect it for you if you lose what god gives to you you cannot blame anybody first timothy chapter 1 verse 18 it says this charge i give to you son timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage a good warfare one of the remarkable phrases in the bible concerns what the parents of moses did according to the book of hebrews chapter 11 when they saw that child they saw that he was a proper child they saw a son and they said this is different remember at that time there was a decree and the decree had gone out from the king every child should be killed a male child should be killed and the soldiers were going out killing their children the children of the jews and not only that parents were delivering or volunteering their sons to be killed because if you didn't volunteer your son to be killed you were in deep trouble so you give birth to a son you enjoy the son probably for a week and you go and give them to the egyptians he's slaughtered and these two people a couple parents of moses gave birth to a son the law of the land says he must not live but they looked at that son and somehow they believe the destiny of this child is greater than the decree of the king they protected that child protected him a couple of weeks 
Then he went into months. He got, went on. Then they couldn't protect the son any longer. So they determined to put the son into God's hands. They made a basket, put the son on the river at a point where they expected that child to be located. The child was located, brought into the camp of Pharaoh. God has a sense of humor. The person looking for the Jews, God sows a seed of his destruction right in his household. And Moses grows up and becomes a deliverer. But why did it happen? Because the parents protected the prophetic destiny of that child. You have to look at the dream God has given to you and say, this is a proper dream. This is a proper vision. This is a life-giving vision. What God has said to me is proper. It's good. And I'm not going to surrender it to be killed. If you don't protect your destiny, nobody will. You have to protect what God says concerning you. You have to protect the word of God to your life. You have to make sure you don't do anything to sabotage the word of God. Many times, it's not even the devil from outside who destroys our prophetic destiny it's we ourselves that the children of israel it wasn't just the armies of pharaoh coming to kill the children it was the parents volunteering the children questing are you volunteering yourself for destruction are you donating yourself for destruction are you the one who goes to tell the devil destroy me you say oh but i'll never do that oh yes but we do that we do that in so many ways through unbelief but mostly through bad self defeating self-destructive habit in this season you must break some habits and you must make sure that every habit that exposes you to demonic attacks and destruction you shut the door don't open the door to the enemy you have too much prophecy hanging upon you after all this anointing that you receive you don't go out and destroy yourself you don't go out and walk in sin and live in sin and expect that God will bless you because when God speaks to you, he expects a correction in our attitudes, in our behaviors, in our habits. Protect your prophetic destiny. Where is God taking you? Do you believe what God has said concerning you? Do you believe where you are going? Do you believe you are anointed? Do you believe you are highly favored? Do you believe that there is a divine destiny for your life? Do you believe you have entered into the best time of your life? Do you believe that God has set an open door before you? Do you believe that? If you believe that, protect it. There are going to be words you will hear. Words that are designed to undermine your faith in God. And when those words come, you have to be careful because words are very powerful. Even when you say you don't believe it, you've heard it. Have you ever heard somebody say something to you and when he said it to you, you argued against him and you rejected it, but after you left, you were thinking about it. Somebody said, oh, your hair is not well combed. He said, oh, it's welcome. I combed it well. But after you leave his presence, the next mirror you see, you look into it to see whether your hair is welcome. So sometimes you argue against something you've heard, but it's entered into your heart. Your mind tells you you've rejected it, but your subconscious tells you you have embraced it. Be very careful of the words that people speak concerning you. People can speak self-defeating destructive words concerning some of you have heard it so long sometimes it's somebody who is close to you it can be your husband it can be your wife it can be your parents it can be relatives you live with it can be somebody you work with who is always killing your spirit you have to learn to keep your spirit alive you may not for some practical purposes be able to move away from that environment but build a shield of faith in your life so that when somebody throws a fiery arrow against you the shield of faith will stop it and what is the shield of faith thus says the lord the word of god is our shield of faith that is what we use to stop and quench the fiery darts of the wicked one there is a prophetic destiny on your life it is going to be manifested. I said it is going to be manifest. You are going to get to the place God says you are going to get to. You will not die a disgrace. You will not die miserable. You will not die frustrated. You will not die disappointed. You will not die with your dreams unrealized. God is good. God is faithful. He has promised you he will watch over his word to perform it. You have to endeavor to stand in faith and see the salvation of the Lord. Protect your prophetic destiny there is something god has deposited inside your life protect i must protect mine 
you must protect yours nobody can protect it for you don't lose what god has given to you don't lose all the remarkable things you receive do you remember how you felt when god spoke to you do you remember how your spirit was activated do you remember how faith rose in your heart do you remember how at a certain point in your life you believed all things were possible because you know many times in a service there are windows that god opens in the realm of the spirit for us sometimes as a preaching is going on just for a one minute or a two minute time something happens to you and at that time you believe anything can happen then that moment passes but that moment was an open window to heaven when it passes don't forget what you receive because it's passed but you must retain something it's almost like when it's raining and you go and put a bucket or a bowl we used to do that i'm sure people still do it a basin you put it outside so that it can fill with water so it's raining the basin is getting filled but then the rain passes but the water remains the moment is passed but you use something to collect what the moment offered you when god gives you an open window the window may not be there all the time but you must retain what god gave to you and that is why god gives you his word that's why you have a memory so every time you go back and remind yourself concerning what you felt at that time how did you feel that inspiration you felt don't lose it because that is your water basin in it is your prophetic destiny hold on to it go back to it remember remind yourself go back look into it again and discover what god gave to you and that's why it's always good to buy cds and dvds of conferences and listen to them because when you listen to them it brings you back to where you were at a certain point in your life even when you have forgotten and it's left your mind you listen and you can capture almost the same feeling and emotion you felt at that time because you have to wage a good warfare by taking hold of your prophetic destiny third possess your new opportunity number one was put past failures behind you number two protect your prophetic destiny number three possess your new opportunities revelations chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 revelations chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 and we read and to the church and to the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things says he who is holy who is true he who has the key of david who opens and no one shuts and who shuts and no one opens i know your works see i have set before you an open door and no one can shut for you have a little strength have kept my word and have not denied my name you have little strength but you didn't give up you kept god's word and god says because your faith did not fail even when you had little strength with little talent with little ability with little skill you still were faithful i have given you a bigger opportunity there is something about faithfulness that leads to greater opportunity the the parable tell us those who were faithful in little were given bigger opportunities if you were faithful with five you were made a master over much if you're faithful in little god gives you bigger opportunities so he says to us because you have been faithful because your faith did not fail because you held on to the word of god a new opportunity has been open for you and there are two things that he says he will do number one he says he's going to open and number two he says he's going to shut god both opens and shuts it's almost like binding and losing he opens a door no one can shut it he shuts a door no one can open it when god is giving you opportunity he doesn't just open a door he also shuts doors there are some doors if god doesn't shut them you will continue entering into them but they are not doors you must enter in and god has to bring a closure to some of you there'll be a finality something is going to shut permanently in your life and it's not always the devil sometimes it's god saying no way no go area enough of this door closed i've opened a new door for you you have to always recognize when a door is shut and when god shuts a door it is useless it is futile it is defeatist 
for you to try to open it sometimes he just shuts the door sometimes he shuts the door so you can see the new door he's opening because can you imagine you are going somewhere and there are three doors open and somebody says enter which door are you going to enter all of them are open but they don't all lead to the same place but he says enter the door you're going to be confused because that is open that is open that is open that is open where do i turn which one is my door and if those the false doors are not shut you would not know the right door to enter into so sometimes all that god does is shut the door shut the door shut the door shut the door so your eyes can see the one door that he has set before you he says i have set a door before you a door not many doors one i've said before you an open door so god does not open most of the time many doors it's just one but if we're not careful that one door comes in the midst of a hundred other doors and you don't know which one is the one god has opened so whilst he's opening one door he's also shutting some doors get ready for some doors to shut and when those doors shut don't fight god don't go and knock on that door and rebuke the devil and cast out and bind and, and reject and go into another 30-day fasting for that door to open. He says when he shuts, no one can open, including yourself. When God shuts the door, your best effort cannot open it. You do the best you can. You try your best. doesn't change it. There are certain things in your life that God has shut permanently. Even your best efforts cannot open it. And nobody can help you open it. There are certain places God will lock you from going there. There are certain people God will put such anger in their hearts against you. They are people who used to like you. Now they don't want to see your face again. That door is shut. Don't go and pray and say, Lord, change his heart. Lord, change his heart. He won't change any heart. In this season, when the door is shut, the door is shut. Don't waste your time praying for God to change somebody's heart. He shut the door. Now, the moment you see a door shut, you say, Lord, where is the open door because it's easier to enter a door that god has already opened than to try to enter one that he has shut and he says i've said before you an open door and no one can shut it that's the good thing about god's open door when you start entering into that door no one can obstruct you no one can shut it no one can stop you from accessing that opportunity so there are going to be shut doors lost opportunities places of comfort places of confidence places of strength you used to have god is going to shut it some of you may lose your job and you must lose that job because it's paying you peanuts and when that door shuts don't go and beg if you go and beg and they take you back it's a shut door to not give you any opportunity it will lead you to more frustration when that door shut it may look like the end of the world but it's not the end of the world the same God who has shut that door has opened another door. All you need to do is to pray and say, Lord, where is my open door? Where is the door you have opened? Where is the new opportunity? Where are you taking me from here? And he will show you another door. And whenever God shuts a door and he opens a door, the new door offers you a thousand times more what the old door used to offer you. You can never see the glory of God until some doors shut. Then you can see the glory of God. Some of you, there are certain places you work. If God doesn't shut the door, you will be there. You will die there. You'll be buried there. But God knows there is something more for you. Maybe you are even afraid to step out. You'll be pushed out. So don't panic when doors shut. Don't panic when opportunities that you thought were right are lost most of the time it's indicative that there is something else something bigger more sublime more effective more profound more generational in its consequences than just this one opportunity the lord opens and shuts door learn not to panic don't panic god is in control finally you must learn to push forward in faith number one put past failures behind you number two protect your prophetic destiny number three possess your new opportunities and number four push forward in faith romans chapter 4 verses 17 to 21 this is in reference to abraham and it says as it is written i have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed god who gives life to the dead and calls 
those things which do not exist as though they did who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform you have to push forward the bible says who contrary to hope believed in hope abraham continued to move forward when all hope was lost he still had hope when he was told it can't happen the story of abraham is still quite confounding medical science is trying to catch up with that and now i think the latest a woman to be able to deliver at an old age was about 62 or thereabouts they haven't caught on with sarah sarah was doing it at 90. i'm sure maybe one day science will catch up with it but for now she holds the record now if somebody tells you somebody who is 90 is going to deliver i don't care who tells you that i mean something in your mind will tell you please spare us no hope abraham saw his wife growing from faith to hopelessness the situation has deteriorated to a place where there is no hope no hope for him no hope for his wife but the bible says when there was no hope he had hope that's quite a strange way of looking at life when it was hopeless it is finished it can't be done case closed this is move on he says i'm not moving on i believe god spoke i believe god's word is true i believe what he said is going to come to pass and i hold on to his word you have to learn to push on abraham the bible says did not stagger at the promise of god when you start believing god you have to learn to push on to persevere to endeavor to move on not to give up not to give in not to surrender to encourage yourself in the lord and keep on keeping on in this season you must push on in faith you must be able to seize your new opportunities possess your new opportunities you must be able to put the past behind you you must hold on to the word of god and i pray in this hundred day open window that god would do something remarkable in your life that you will receive that which your heart has desired for for many years the things that you thought were past you they were gone they would not never happen will begin to happen may god's favor be your portion may god give you strength like sarah to conceive may god give you a testimony in your old age may god cause you to smile may god cause his word to become real in your life may his promises become your possession may god close every wrong door in your life may he open new doors in your life may you move from confusion to faith to certainty because of an open door may the lord anoint your eyes to perceive the open doors may you see when a door is open may your spirit identify new opportunities may your spirit reject opportunities that are not of god may you hear the voice of god may you hear the sound of heaven as you possess your inheritance in these 97 days may god cause you to be catapulted from ordinariness to extraordinariness may you have accelerated development accelerated expansion accelerated growth may you experience divine visitation in your home in your office wherever you are may god anoint your feet and guide your feet in the right places may god line up sequences and series and cycles of miracles and signs and wonders may you receive them more than a thousand times more may you experience divine visitation divine favor divine wisdom in all that you do i release you into your destiny i release you into an open heaven i release you into the favor of god i release you into miracles i release you into signs i release you into miracles i release you into signs signs and wonders will follow you in the name of jesus may your hands be strengthened may your feet walk in the paths ordained for you i prophesy that the open heavens will materialize in your life you will not be behind you will not be left behind you will not be sidelined but you will be on time you will be on schedule 
you will be right on time every step will lead you closer to the purposes of god may god remove the wrong people out of your life may he remove the wrong opportunities out of your life and may his door be the only door before you as you move on i release you into your destiny into your prophetic destiny in jesus name amen if you want to support our podcast and stay informed about our latest episodes we're always creating new content every week for our podcast subscribing is the best way to ensure that you don't miss out on any of it please hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. God blesses you all and be legendary, my friends.